Okay, so getting back to our theme of all basic obedience does is removes the impediments that get in the way of integrating your dog into your life. It doesn't do any good to give me a lot of money to teach your dog to come be still and have good manners at my house, okay? And then you not follow up with it because what you'll end up with is a dog that minds at my house and not your house, right? So this dog here with a little bit of exercise, a little bit of click and treat every once in a while, okay? A little bit of proactive thinking in terms of your expectations for the type of dog that he is, okay? Is always gonna be successful. Now, you take this same dog, you get a little busy at work, you get a little bit busy with children's activities, okay? And this dog, who you guys have looked at this morning, looks awesome, okay? He doesn't take to that very well. Okay? So you have a high energy dog that's very inquisitive and full of life and likes a lot of attention and you deprive him of exercise, you deprive him of structure, you deprive him of attention. Okay? Well that all manifests itself in a lot of what we call negative attention seeking behavior. Okay? So if you think about early training as a way to make your dog smart, okay? as a way to make your dog pattern cognizant, then think about this. If you were a dog and you were sitting at your house and nobody was paying attention to you and nobody was exercising you, okay, wouldn't you immediately start trying to figure out how to alleviate that problem? And so, if you were calm, attentive, and polite and no one noticed because they were busy, what do you think you might start doing? You might start negative attention seeking, right? You might grab somebody's underwear and run through the house. You might start barking at people. You might start jumping at people when they come through the door. You might even get a little grouchy, you know? Like, you know how it is, like, if you've been, like, in a house a bunch, you've been sick, or you've been working a lot, you haven't been able to get out and do anything fun? You know how you get a little grouchy, a little short-tempered with people, okay? Well, dogs do the same thing. If they're not getting, oh, oh good boy, he's a very good boy. If they're not getting their base social needs met, Okay? Well, then a lot of times what happens is you are going to get exposed to the worst aspects of their personality, not the best aspects of their personality. Does that make sense? Right? So, I mean, you see this little dog, when I'm fooling with him, he looks, you know, I mean, not the best trained dog in the world, but he doesn't look too bad. Stay. You know, here, go ahead and practice with him. Go ahead and practice with him. See if you can remember the course, okay? Now remember what I told you about if you have trouble remembering the course, all that means is you're developing empathy, right? You understand that this stuff is not super easy, and so you don't get so mad. All right, so we're gonna come over here and start right here. All right, now see, so right off the bat, it's like dancing, the dog went from having a good dancing partner to not the best dancing partner, right? So you can see where there's to be a little room for conflict. Now, if you come in and you're just honest with the dog and you say, look, I, I'm not going to, like, if you don't do it perfect, I don't, I don't do it perfect, we're just going to have a good time. We're going to learn about each other. Okay? You see how that helps a lot? So just throw in some clicks and treats whenever he makes you happy, and he'll forgive the fact that you're not the best dance partner. And he'll just be happy to be getting interaction. And a dog like this, like, he craves interaction. And so when he's out here, when he has tons of people to hang out with and he has tons of dogs to hang out with and he gets lots and lots of exercise, okay, he's pretty much perfect. But when he goes home, it's a suboptimal environment for this particular dog's personality, you know? And so you have two options as the owner at that point. You can either lower your expectations and realize that you're not doing everything that you could be doing to make the dog perform at the expected level, okay? Or you could start doing everything it takes to help the dog perform at the expected level. And what I want you to always remember when you start to get frustrated, and this is the point of your training journal, the first place you look when you're frustrated with the dog is in the mirror. You don't look for more advice. You don't look for new training techniques. You don't look for fancy gadgets. You just walk in the bathroom and look at the mirror and ask yourself if you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing to help the dog be successful. Does that make sense? Because if you are, then now you've narrowed down 
a lot of stuff and we can look at my, what might need to change about the dog training. Now just tell him to stay there. Stay. And then walk away. But like with this dog, when I show you this dog and I say he's having problems at home, do you guys think we need to open up the How to Train Dogs Better book? Or do you think we need to open up the How to Be a Better Dog Owner book? Okay? Because I think problems with a dog like this starts with looking in the mirror. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Very nice. Does that make sense?